we're finally on the last recessionary gap uh, analysis that we're going to do. And this one is the same as last one, just with it being a recessionary gap. So let's go through the long run options. The first long run option is again natural, where we let our factor prices fall. This will let our AS uh, move right from AS1 to AS2. So it moves right from AS1 to AS2. And when this happens, uh, you can see that our price has fallen. Price has fallen. And when price falls, MD falls. Uh, as well as I falls. So this was, let's say, price one. This is price two. So I falls, and then when I falls, we know that the price of the bonds go up. Price of the bonds go up, that means that uh, we want uh, we want the foreign bonds, so there's a capital outflow. And when there's a capital outflow, that means we need the foreign currency. So there's currency depreciation. And then uh, foreign currency demand is right, moves right from, from, uh, from D1 to D2, D1 to D2. So let's just change colors. So moves right from D1 to D2. And this is the new, the new exchange rate. They move, the FC demand moves right because as you can remember from the last video, uh, people don't want uh, their, their domestic money. They want their foreign currency money because foreign bonds are currently cheaper. So then if the, if E is flexible, then then it moves from E increases from E1 to E2 as I reflected in the graph. Now to keep to keep uh, to keep E at E1, what the bank has to do is the bank would have to uh, the bank would have to sell their foreign currency. Bank sells uh, FC. So then, so then the bank pretty much increases the supply of FC to meet the demand. So, so that would be the new supply. And then, as you can see, we're back at E1 again. Now, EFP, imaginary fiscal policy. We know that uh, government either increased their spending or taxes, tax rate goes down. 80 moves right from... Uh, from 81 to 82. So why is this 82? I don't know. This is how tired I am. So 80 moves right from 81 to 82. So 81 to 82, and then the price would go up, as we can see. The, this is price, this should be price one, price two. I just like labeling, but you don't have to. Price one, price two, so price goes up. And MD goes up, and I goes up, and then when uh, interest rate goes up, we know that the price of bonds go down. Price of bonds go down. That means our domestic bonds are cheap. There's capital inflow because people want the cheap bonds, and when the people want the cheap bonds, and they need the they need the domestic currency. So our the domestic currency gets stronger, and when this happens, uh, factors. Uh, uh, yeah, foreign currency supply moves right, moves right from S1 to S2. That's because um, the market doesn't want their foreign currency anymore, so they're selling it. So then the, the foreign currency will move right from S1 to S2, and then there would be a drop in a uh, and exchange rate and by drop I mean appreciation and let's see what's left so if E is flexible if E is flexible then uh, E falls from from E1 to E2 as I shown in the graph here E1 uh, fell to E2 and to keep 
to keep uh, to keep e at e1 what must the bank do the bank has to buy the bank has to buy the foreign currency the bank buys foreign currency and that will uh, increase our demand from d1 to d2 so we get back to e1 so d1 rises i should also put here that uh that in this case uh, s1 s1 moved to s2 so it moved to right so s2 also rises and by rise i mean they moved to the right right also rising and this is rising so the last uh, last thing to do is uh, our expansionary monetary policy MS increases or I decreases AD moves right from 81 to 82 which I've shown in this graph and then the the reaction I guess I guess I am doing reaction oh and in the last video I actually did do reaction here I just forgot it was reaction so yeah price moves up MD moves up I moves up that's the reaction because the bank will follow the EMP and the market will react to it in the opposite way but then overall the overall effect is that uh, the policy wins so I goes down the price of bonds go up there's a capital outflow so money's flowing out so then so then everything's the same as this natural uh, the natural way of fixing a recession you get so there's a there's capital outflow and then our domestic currency depreciates because people want the foreign currency so foreign currency demand moves right from d1 to d2 which is this graph here and then if e is flexible if uh, it uh, goes up or depreciates and to keep e at e1 the bank will the bank will pretty much provide the market with what they need with the foreign currency so bank sells their foreign currency so then s1 will move to s2 and then we'll keep uh, e at e1 that will keep e at e1 and that's expansionary monetary policy and so i'll just put uh same situation same situation as the natural long run option as natural lr option and i think i forgot to mention that pretty much emp is like a mix of efp graph which is efp graph and uh and uh this this other graph uh that i forgot the name of pretty much it, in all my past videos it it's pretty much the same thing and I'm sorry I forgot to uh, remind you guys that I'm pretty inconsistent with my Y's they could sometimes they're large Y's and sometimes they're small Y's and I'm pretty lazy and I don't want to go back and f redo all my videos so I'm just gonna leave it like this but uh, I guess as a general uh, fact uh, most of my little Y's should be be large wise but there are exceptional cases so you might want to watch out for that but i guess it's too late to say because we're almost nearing the end of this series but uh, thanks for watching please rate comment subscribe and uh, i think i'll see you in the next video which might be the last video uh, again thanks for watching